Okay, the parallel. Yes. Axis. Okay, look right there. It's recording. You know, that's not going to show up on YouTube and they're going to think you're crazy. Yeah, I know. I'll probably, I'll probably make more fans that way. If they think I'm crazy. Okay, um, now, so um, there is a, a nice little proof of this on page 305, but I'm not going to go through the proof. But if you take an object like this, and let's use the stick as an example. Um, and we just showed that if you rotate it about the center of mass, um, we, we, we derived using calculus the equation for the rotational inertia, 1 12th uh, ml squared. But what if I offset my axis of rotation from there? For example, what if I held the stick all the way at the end? Well, let's put it on this end. Well, we have this thing called the parallel axis theorem that lets us handle that. What is the rotational inertia about the end of the stick instead of about its center? Well, here it is. I is equal to the rotational inertia of the center of mass. Now, we're going to add to it, right? We're going to increase the rotational inertia because we're going to have a lot more mass far away from the axis of rotation. Well, here's how it works. It's as if you take this stick, you go, you turn it into a particle, okay, and then you, um, uh, and then it's 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 right there, and then uh, th then we move the axis of rotation over here, and so now my distance from the mass we, we almost treat it like a particle. We add. Uh, the particle nature of this uh, to it. So it's just plus m d squared. Well, let me make it capital M, since I use capital M up there. And d is the distance now of the center of mass from our axis of rotation. Y'all got that? d is the distance. So, now, remember, this is the rotational inertia of a particle. So we treat this thing like all the mass is concentrated at the center of mass, and now it's like a particle. Um, and, and, and so we treat it like a particle, and here's the axis of rotation. Here's my particle, and it's d, d you know, far away. And so we just add that to the rotational inertia I got from the center of mass. Now there's a, like I said, there's a proof of this on page 305 of your book. So read it if you need a proof. Um, now, how would I use this for a stick? Well, I would say I is equal to the center of mass, 1 12th m l squared plus, now if I go all the way to the end of the stick, Here's D from here to here. So that's going to be M D squared. But what is D compared to the length of the stick? Huh? L over 2. So D is L over 2 squared. And so now I just need to add these two together. I've got 1 12th ml squared plus, now this is going to be uh, 1 fourth ml squared. Now 1 twelfth plus 1 fourth is 1 third. So I is equal to, let me zoom in. So I is equal to one third ml squared. And if you look in your on, on table 10.2, they have a long thin rod with a rotational axis through the end, one third ml squared. You can also do this if you're so inclined, if 
you're that inspired. You can go back to this problem that we did before, this example, and just move the axis of rotation from here over to here. And all the math is the same, except that our limits of, of I mean, the, the, the starting point, this is going to be 0 to L. We're going to go from 0 to L. And when you go through that, you're going to get 1 third ML squared when you go through that uh, arithmetic. So it works. The parallel axis theorem works. And um, I think there's one problem on the test where there's a rotating object where the center of mass, where the axis of rotation is offset from the center of mass. So um, uh, it's, it's pretty easy uh, to use. The, the only problem is, is that some students forget about it. So right now, put a little bubble around this or highlight it or whatever you do. This should be on your equation list. And it's a good thing to know.